Hello everyone, welcome to our online video worship playlist for Sunday the 26th of July, the 12th Sunday after Trinity, and very glad that you're joining us in this way, because as we've seen over the past couple of weeks, unfortunately, there has been an increase again in the number of coronavirus uh, cases in Belgium. While we will continue to hold uh, worship in our church for as long as we can uh, on Wednesdays, Saturdays, and on the two services on Sundays, um, this is perhaps the safest way for many of you who fall into the risk category uh, and want to encourage all of you to join us together in prayer that we can again bring healing and wholeness to not just this country and not just this city, but to the whole world and that we do that in Jesus' name. So uh, let's be really good about wearing face masks, not just when we come to church. I'm thrilled that all of you have been so good about doing that when you come to join us in worship, but also everywhere we go, whenever we go into a shop, this is the least that we can do to help our brothers and sisters and the whole world be healed. Um, so that's just one small thing that we can do. Uh, in the coming weeks, you should then also keep checking on Facebook, on our website, and also through these videos, because if there are any changes to where and when we are able to worship, that will be how we let you know. Okay, so until then, I hope that all of you stay safe and stay blessed. Peace and blessings, everyone. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Let us confess our sins, trusting in God's mercy. forgives you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away our sin. Let us approach our God in peace. Amen. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with signs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what it is, is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. 
for those whom he foreknew, he also predescended to the confirmed to image of his son, in order that we might be the firstborn within a large family. And those who he predescended, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elected? It is God who justifies. Who is to commend? Is it Christ who died? Yes, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors to him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rules, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen now for the gospel. Hallelujah. It is God's word that changes us. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, melt and break our hearts of stone until we give our lives to God and God alone. Come, Holy Spirit, melt and break our hearts of stone until we Listen now for the gospel. Hallelujah. It is God's word that changes us. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, bind the broken, find the lost. Confirm in us the fire and love of Pentecost. Come, Come Holy Spirit, Spirit bind the broken, find the lost. Confirm in Listen now for the gospel. Alleluia. It is God's word that changes us. Alleluia. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field again. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bed, so it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the right righteous, and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered yes. 
And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one God, source, word, and spirit. Amen. So what do a mustard seed, yeast, buried treasure, a pearl, and a fishing net have in common? Sounds like the opening of a joke, doesn't it? But Jesus says that God's kingdom is like a mustard seed, yeast, buried treasure, a pearl, and a fishing net. What is the connection here? Well, first, each of these images is small. A mustard seed is tiny. A spoonful of yeast is nothing when mixed in with 45 kilos of flour. So on one level, Jesus' message here is, you won't find God's kingdom looking at things that are big or flashy or asking for our attention. Think small and overlooked. Second, each story has an element of hiddenness. The mustard seed is hidden in the ground. The yeast is hidden in the dough. The treasure is hidden in a field. The costly pearl is hidden among other pearls. And the fishing net catches fish that were hidden in the sea. So in each case, the kingdom is not right in front of our eyes. It's underneath the surface. It, it must be searched for. It is waiting to be discovered. So then the question becomes, where should we look for God's kingdom? And we might think maybe in a big fancy church or some holy place where holy people go to pray. Or maybe we need to ask those great spiritual leaders for directions. But Jesus' five stories suggest that God has pulled the oldest trick in the book and hidden the kingdom in a place that nobody would think to look. In our ordinary, everyday lives. Because the people listening to Jesus' stories would have known these places very well. Gardening, baking, or fishing. Activities that don't seem particularly special or holy at first glance. So in other words, God's kingdom is hidden in the things that we do every day. Now, right now, there is something small and hidden that we hear about every day. The coronavirus. But let's be clear, the kingdom of God is not like this virus. And we know that because the things in Jesus' stories all create abundance. Abundant joy, abundant food, abundant life. And this virus does none of those things. So today, Jesus is saying God's kingdom can be found all around us every day. But don't be fooled by its smallness or its hiddenness. Look for places that create a lot of joy. And when we find the source of that abundant joy, we should sell everything else, make room for it, clear some space for it in our lives, because the joy of God's kingdom is the only thing that is truly worth having. And for that, we can say, 
Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Spirit pray through us as we try to put into words the longings of our hearts for the Church and for the world. Today, the answer to Lord of all creation is Teach us your ways. Father, we thank you for all who have helped us to pray and to grasp something of your great love and power. We ask your blessing and empowering for all who teach and minister in your name. We ask for our Sunday worship to be an overflowing of our daily walk with you, an expression of our deepening love. In the diocesan calendar, we pray for the Spanish Episcopal Church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland, the diocesan office in London with their safeguarding team and their care for children and vulnerable adults. Lord of all creation, teach us your ways. Father, we thank you for the beauty and diversity of the created world we inhabit. We ask for the wisdom to tend it carefully, respecting the natural laws and sharing the resources, listening to the weak as well as the strident, the poor as well as the affluent and powerful. We pray for the work of the Mission to Seafarers, the Mission's Regional Director for the Middle East and South Asia, and for the work in the Port of Ghent. Lord of all creation, teach us your ways. Father, we thank you for the candor and innocence of the very young and for the joy of friendship, for all with whom we share our daily life and for those we love but seldom meet. We ask for hearts that are skilled in listening so that we discern and respond to the real agendas and remember that a conversation is always a two-way event. Lord of all creation, teach us your ways. Father, we thank you for the advances in medical knowledge and the hope of new treatments for many diseases, in particular COVID-19. We pray for the leprosy mission and at this time especially its work in Scotland. We pray for all in medical research and all whose lives are crippled or disadvantaged by illness, frailty or damage. Give comfort and reassurance, healing, wholeness and peace to all who suffer, especially at this moment in our own community, Alain, Marianne, Jack, Eddie, Christine, Isabel, Kingsley, Hans, Pete, Jan, Jacqueline, André, John and Dominique, and all those whom we know in our hearts need prayer at this time. Lord of all creation, teach us your ways. Father, we call to mind all those we have known and loved who lived among us and now have died. We pray for all who made their journey unnoticed and alone. 
We ask that they may all know your mercy and the everlasting peace and joy of heaven. Lord of all creation, teach us your ways. Father, we thank you for your wisdom and truth, your understanding and generosity. We acknowledge our total dependence on you and praise you for providing us with all we need. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us share with one another, wherever we are, whoever we're with, in whatever way we can, the peace of Christ. In whatever language we feel most comfortable, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.